Hey, how is it going everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you guys 20 awesome drift spots in GTA 5. Some of these spots you might have seen before, others you probably have not. Either way, there's plenty of locations here for you guys to host drift meets with your friends or to get some practice in. So with all that said, let's get started. Kicking off this list is probably the most well-known drift spot in the game, the docks. And because this is such a large spot, I'm going to be breaking this down and covering the terminal and Elysian Island separately. First off, we of course have the terminal. As far as I've seen, this is the more popular part of the docks, but for a lot of good reasons. There's a few different and very open areas around the terminal where you can make up some really fun lines to take. There's the more open trailer parking area, the area around the warehouses in the bottom right corner, as well as the larger section of roads around the stacked shipping containers and the cargo ship. The roads around these shipping containers are long and wide, and there's a bunch of different areas here to hit some really fun high-speed entries. Overall, there's plenty of room at the terminal to create different low, medium, and high-speed lines depending on your skill level or the car that you're drifting. The scenery might make things a little bit boring, but don't be mistaken, there's unlimited possibilities here. And this, combined with minimal traffic, makes the terminal a great spot for drift meets and practicing tandems with your friends. Next up, we have Elysian Island. Now, this is the other part of the docks, and in my opinion, is a more fun spot to explore than the terminal because there's so much variation here. There's three separate areas of Elysian Island that each offer some awesome lines for you to take. Now, the first area is the one that's furthest to the right as shown, and this has a long straight leading up to a big right-hander that makes for some really fun entries, and you can link these up with various lines around the stacks of shipping containers. It's a fairly small spot, but you can still make a bunch of really fun and short lines here. The second area is to the left of this first location and has another long straight leading up to a really tight left hand turn. This makes for some really fun high speed entries and you can follow this up with some freestyle drifting around the back of the warehouse. This isn't a super diverse section but it is still very fun for some high speed drifts. The third location is the one furthest to the left and has a couple really great open areas for you to make some fun lines. More specifically, the open lot that runs alongside the cargo ship is a great spot to explore as there's a really fun high speed entry into a right hand turn and you can follow this up with some lines around the buildings and the stacks of shipping containers. This is a great spot for drifters of pretty much any skill level as there's plenty of low, medium, and high speed sections here. And right near this is another high speed layout that I really like to take and this has a bunch of longer sweeping turns with a couple tight areas that make it a little bit more challenging. Overall, Elysian Island is a massive and diverse spot with hundreds of different lines to take in the three separate areas that I mentioned. I feel like I could make a video just covering various spots at the docks because there's so many, but I hope I was still able to show you guys a few fun ones that I really enjoy. Next up is Los Santos International Airport or LSIA. Now this is probably one of the most open spots on this list, meaning that it's great for those big drift meets or for practicing, but there's also not a ton of obstacles for you to drift around. So for the best experience here, I'd recommend heading into the race creator, so that way you can place down props to mark out different lines you want to take. But if you still want to explore this spot in free mode, you can make some decent lines out of the white markings on the tarmac and along the service roads near the runway. You definitely have to make the most out of your own creativity to have fun drifting here, but even then, LSIA is still a great open spot for any drifter regardless of your skill level or how powerful your car is. Next up is the Krastenberg Hotel and the parking lot just near LSIA. Now this is a fairly diverse spot that's kind of tucked away, but it is still pretty popular for drift meets and competitions. More specifically, the road that leads around the Krastenberg Hotel makes for a pretty technical line with a lot of low and high speed sections, but it is pretty narrow and this can be tough to navigate for some beginner drifters. Still though, it's a pretty fun route to practice and there's even a little jump drift that you can take as you enter this little line. And right behind the Krastenberg Hotel is a parking lot under the highway overpass. This is another really fun spot that is pretty basic but is still large and wide enough to get some tandems going with your friends. You can also link this spot up with the road that runs around this lot for an extra challenge. Some of these turns are pretty wide so you will need to have a more powerful car to link everything together, and also knowing the mid-drive speed boost is really important for transitioning between those tighter and longer turns without straightening out. Separate from that though, this is still a very fun spot that you can get a lot of good practice at. Next up are the Maze Bank Arena parking lots. 
Now these all combine to make a fairly large spot with a lot of different sections for you to plan out a bunch of different lines and hit some really fun high speed entries. What I like to do at this spot is to enter into the lot furthest from the arena as fast as I can for a big left handed reverse entry and then I'll drift through the underpass into the next lot and around the guard booth and then I'll follow that up by drifting up the road into the lot just next to the arena. Because this spot is so large you can create a ton of different routes using these lots as well as the roads that run around the arena. Even though there aren't a ton of obstacles to drift around there's plenty of room to practice the basics, tandem with your friends, and host full blown drift meets without worrying about traffic or a ton of parked cars. Next up is the Noodle House parking lot, which I've combined with the Puerta del Sol Marina parking lot right across the street. Now, the Noodle House parking lot is a fairly small and technical lot, and you can follow a pretty tight line around it using the barriers, and you can even link it together with the surrounding streets. There's also a slight elevation change that helps to mix things up a bit, and adds a bit more of a challenge depending on your entry speed. Now, given that this is a simple line with tighter corners, pretty much anybody can drift here, and you don't need a super powerful car either. And as I said, right across the street from this is the Puerta del Sol Marina parking lot, which is another really open lot that's great for those wider and longer drifts. You can build up a ton of speed on the entrance and hit a fast right-handed entry, and then mix this up a bit with some freestyle drifting afterwards. There's not much more to say about this lot in specific, but it is still a pretty fun and scenic spot to drift at, and is also great for hosting car meets. Overall, both the Noodle House and Marina parking lots make for a really fun and diverse spot that's pretty commonly overlooked. Next up is the Del Perro Pier Boardwalk and the adjacent parking lot. Now this is another one of those really well known spots for drifting in GTA 5, but for a lot of reasons. There's a long run up to the pier itself which can make for some really fun high speed entries, in addition to a pretty open parking lot that allows you to run a variety of different lines depending on the car that you bring there. On top of that, the wooden boardwalk surface is super slippery and allows most cars to drift on it without much issue. And because of this, the pier is a great spot to practice for beginner drifters as you can better learn car control without having to stress about using the mid-drive speed boost. And if the boardwalk pier area is a little bit too small for you, the asphalt parking lot just next to it is another great open spot to practice your drifts. You can hit some really fun entries coming into the parking lot from the left or the right, and then you can whip around wherever you want to in the parking lot. There's even a small jump trip that you can hit if you enter in from the highway fast enough. Overall, the spot is fairly open and parked cars aren't much of an issue, but you can always head into the race creator and make some custom layouts if you want to. Together, the boardwalk area and the adjacent parking lot make for a very large and diverse spot, making it a blast to drift at. Next up are the Pillbox Hill apartment parking lots. Now on their own, these parking lots are pretty small, but combined together, there's enough obstacles to make for a really fun drifting layout. Overall, this is a pretty technical spot, but there's an even mix of both low and medium speed sections that make it a good location for tandems or practicing your drifts. You can also create a bunch of different lines depending on your skill level and the car that you're using, and if you want to, you can try to link both parking lots together or link it with the surrounding roads for a bit more of a challenge. Sometimes the planners in the first parking lot can make things a bit more cramped and park cars can also be a little annoying, but overall, Overall, these parking lots make for a really fun drift spot. Next up is the Pillbox Hill Parking Garage. Now this is another technical spot, but it can accommodate pretty much any drifter and also a ton of different cars. There's plenty of opportunities for low to medium speed lines here, whether you're drifting up the ramps or around the parking areas on each level. I personally enjoy entering in from the street and then drifting all the way up to the rooftop. Sometimes the parked cars and the support comms can make drifting through each of the different levels fairly difficult, whereas the roof is super open with enough room to make a bunch of different lines. Overall, this is a great spot to host drift meets and tandem with your friends, plus it gives off some major Tokyo Drift vibes, especially at night. Next up is the parking lot beneath the IAA building. Now this is another small spot, but I've drifted here a ton myself and I've also seen plenty of other people host their drift meets here. I think the main reason why people like this spot so much is because of its simplicity. There's one really popular line to take around this spot with some low speed turns and tighter transitions, so pretty much anybody can drift here regardless of your skill level or the car that you're using. This is also a great spot for practicing car control as there's a lot of different obstacles to navigate around, but it's also open enough that you can get some tandems going too.
Next up are the underground parking areas at the O'Neill Pavilion and the Lombank Complex. Now this is another pretty technical spot but is still a blast to drift at. What you can do is enter in from the parking garage from across the street, hit a little jump drift going over that road into the big left hand turn, and then follow this up with some freestyle drifting through some of the tighter underground areas which include the various parking lots or the path that leads back up to the main road. This is a slow to medium speed spot that's great for most skill levels and a lot of different cars. Any route that you take here is bound to get a bit narrow and tough to navigate due to all the obstacles and also traffic, but still it is a fun and challenging line. Next up are the Weasel Plaza apartment roundabouts and access roads. Now even though this is a small spot, it still is a great location to practice for pretty much any drifter and also suits most drift cars. The main attraction here is of course the roundabouts themselves, as you can practice donuts and transitions in a fairly open figure 8. The wide path is especially helpful because you can practice both tight and wide donuts, and you can also practice simple tandems with your friends. What I really like to do here is enter into the line using the main lot entrance, drift around the roundabouts, and then exit through the access roads in the back. These access roads can get pretty tight and technical, but there's not a lot of traffic to bother you, and in combination with the roundabouts this makes for a really fun spot with room for plenty of different lines. Next up we have the Diamond Casino parking lot and horse track underpass. Now this is another fairly small but very fun spot, mainly because of how the underpass from the horse track links up with the parking lot. You can make a really fun line out of this if you start from that horse track area, and then go for a high speed entry into that right hand curve leading around to the parking lot. Normally I'll take this route and link it together with the main parking lot for some freestyle drifting. Sometimes parked cars and traffic can get a bit annoying, but this still is a really fun spot that suits both beginners and more skilled drifters, plus the parking lot is large enough for you to host a car meet at the same time. Next up is the Vinewood Bowl parking lot. This is another small spot, but it does have a really cool main attraction, which is a jump drift. There's a pretty long run up to an inclined section of road, which is a great setup for a left-handed jump drift into the back parking lot. The parking lot itself is wide and diverse enough to allow for some fun freestyle drifting as well. This spot is definitely better suited to more skilled drifters with more powerful cars, and serves as a great spot to practice jump drifts. The road can get pretty narrow at points, and also parked cars can be a bit of a nuisance, but overall it still is a fun little spot to try out. Next up is the Vinewood Reservoir, also called Lake Vinewood. Now this is another high speed spot with a lot of long sweeping turns that's going to be more suited to those experienced drifters and higher powered cars because you do need to use the mid-drive speed boost a lot to get through those long turns. There's a couple difficult areas here with some tighter hairpins and also some longer stretches of narrow road that can make things a bit harder to navigate especially when traffic's involved. Despite that though, this is still a fun spot and it's also a pretty big spot too, so there's plenty of different lines that you could try here. What I really like doing is entering in from that big sweeping turn on the left hand side of the reservoir then hitting the hairpin and linking that up with the small downhill section that runs along the water. Whichever route you decide to take here will be challenging, but that's what makes this reservoir a great location to test your high speed drifting skills. Next up is Mount Han Drive, which is the downhill route behind the Vinewood sign. Now this is probably one of the most popular drifting spots in GTA 5 because it's super fun, but it is also pretty intimidating. This is a downhill spot with some very wide turns, meaning that you're going to need a very powerful car and a fair amount of experience doing high speed drifts to link all those turns together. The fact that the route is downhill is actually pretty helpful because gravity is going to pull your car down the hill and help you keep those longer slides going. At the same time though, car control is especially important because when you pick up so much speed, transitions are a lot harder to do. Still though, this is a very fun spot and is definitely a great location to hone your high speed drifting skills. Next up are the Galileo Observatory Downhill Roads. Now this is another nice poge like spot with some really fun high speed downhill sections. At the top of the hill there's two main lines that you can take, either the one that goes to the left or the one that goes to the right. The route that goes to the left has some really wide sweepers but a very tight left hand hairpin that takes a lot of getting used to. The route to the right is a bit faster and has some pretty mellow turns followed by a very long right hand turn and some quick switchbacks to follow that. Either way this location is definitely suited to more experienced drifters using higher powered cars as once again you'll have to use the mid-drive speed boost extensively to link all those turns together. The downhill grade also makes transitions a bit harder, especially if you're carrying a lot of speed. Overall, while this is another pretty difficult spot, it still is fun and very realistic and it's great for honing your high speed drifting skills. Next up are the Great Chaparral Mountain Roads and Switchbacks. 
Now this is a really fun and super fast spot and it's actually a little bit less technical than some of the other spots that we've covered since it's basically just one big zigzag with a bunch of long sweeping turns. These are fairly long corners that are going to require both a powerful car and extensive use of the mid-drive speed boost but the slight downward incline is going to help a lot to keep your car moving through those longer drifts. There's also a really cool jump drift line near that T intersection before the switchbacks start as well. Whatever you decide to do at this spot it is a very high speed section and you will need to be pretty skilled to master it. Still, these switchbacks make for a smooth, consistent, and fun spot that's super rewarding once you get the hang of it. Next up is the Marlowe Valley Vineyard Road in Tongba Hills, or what I like to call the Tongba Toge Route. Now this is an absolute blast of a spot to drift at and is one of the most rewarding once you learn to link all these turns together. There's two main routes to follow at the spot, there's either the one that leads east down towards the vineyard, or another that goes south towards the coastline. Either way, this spot is definitely not for beginner drifters and will require some knowledge of the mid-drive speed boost and a more powerful car to get through those really wide sweeping turns. At the same time, car control is really important because there's a downhill grade and some smaller, tighter corners that can make transitions much harder. This is still a really fun and realistic spot to try out and definitely gives off some initial D vibes, especially at night. Come to think of it, I'm also getting some major Need for Speed Carbon vibes here as well. I think that really just reaffirms just how much fun of a spot this is. And last but not least, we have Fort Zancudo. And this is by far my personal favorite spot for drifting in GTA 5. I mainly tend to do a majority of my drifting towards the upper left hand side of the base near the runway because there's a ton of different paths to create some really fun medium to high speed lines here. You probably recognize these from some of my videos. There's also a ton of other spots around the base that you can explore, like the parking lot next to the main entrance, the large aircraft hangars, the back warehouse lot, as well as the barracks. Now in order to access this spot in a normal free mode session, you will need to own a hangar at the base, otherwise you're gonna get a one on a level and you'll just get destroyed by a tank once you enter. Now to avoid this, I'd recommend that you guys create a custom race at Fort San Kudo so that way you can explore it freely, plus you can clear out some annoying props that could get in the way of your lines. And for my Xbox guys, feel free to check the Social Club job link in the description for a custom race map that I made here for testing purposes. Overall, Fort San Kudo is an amazing spot for pretty much any drifter. It also suits a ton of different cars and has plenty of lines for you to try out. So I kind of lied to you guys, I do have another spot here and it's kind of a bonus, and these are your custom made drift maps. Sometimes in my opinion the best spot is the one that you make yourself. In my opinion the race creator is a great tool for you guys to make entirely new drift routes from scratch or to place down props at existing spots on the map, which I actually did recommend for some of the more open locations that I talked about earlier on in this video. I've seen people recreate iconic drift tracks from real life, while some others have made amazing drift tracks just from scratch. Now in the description down below I'm going to leave some links to some awesome community made drifting maps and their creators, as well as some helpful tutorials by Black Sheep TV that outline pretty much every single step for creating a drift track for yourself. It's truly amazing what you can do with the race creator, so if you guys haven't already tried it, I definitely would give it a shot. Also, once again for my Xbox One guys, feel free to drop any links to custom tracks that you've made if you want me to try them out. Anyways, that will conclude my list of the best drifting spots in GTA 5. If you guys have any other suggestions for spots that you think I should check out, feel free to let me know in the comments on this video or hit me up on Discord. As always, if you guys found this video helpful, feel free to drop a like on it, leave any feedback or questions that you have in the comments, and also consider subscribing to my channel for more GTA 5 drifting content coming very soon. Thank you all so much for watching, and have an awesome day.